Good afternoon, students. As usual, it's another time in the presence of the Lord. You are welcome. In Jesus' name, can we bow down our heads for prayer? Amen. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Amen. We celebrate your faithful name. Amen. We celebrate your holy name. We magnify your name. We lift your name on high. We say, be that I exalt the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we thank you for this grace. We thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence again. Oh, Lord, we are not taking it for granted. It's a privilege, and we appreciate that. Oh, Lord, we thank you for keeping us alive to this moment. We thank you, Lord, for your protection. We thank you, Lord, for provision. We thank you, Lord, for, for, for everything you've done. We say be that glorified, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Heavenly Father, as we proceed into this um, service, Father, Lord, we pray that, Lord, your, your, your power will be showcased right yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for as many as, 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 as are out there. Father, Lord, we, I pray that you prepare their hearts to receive. You prepare their hearts to understand in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that, Lord, you open their eyes to see. You open their ears to hear in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that, Lord, as we listen to this message, we will not be the hearer only, but also be the doer of the word in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you we give you all the praise for answering our prayers because we trust you we, 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 we commit everything yeah. into your hands we put all our trust in you for in jesus mighty name we have worshiped yeah. the same uh, atmosphere the same uh, worship i want us to begin to worship god i want us to lift up yeah. our voices as we thank god as we worship his holy name as we magnify his faithful name he's so faithful he's so glorious he's so beautiful his name is beautiful his name is god we call you god we call you yahweh we call you equipment, we call you the living God. We call you the rose of Shana, we call you the Bam of Gilead. Oh Lord, we thank you. We worship you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. You say we what we understand is that a man that is not thankful is just like a tank that, that, that is full of emptiness. Oh Lord, we thank you. We worship you. We have exalt your holy name. We exalt your holy name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. We give you all the praise. We give you all the adoration, Lord. Thank you, most high God. Thank you, most high King. We worship you. We we, we lift your name on high, Lord. We express that love to you. Oh, Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, Lord. We appreciate you. Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, we give you all the honor. Lord, we give you all the honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Jesus. You've been faithful, God, from the ages past. That is why your name, O Lord, call is forevermore. Oh, you've been faithful, God, from the ages past. Hey, that is why your name, O Lord, O Kola, is for it. Can you lift your voice and sing? You've been faithful, God. You've been faithful. Lord, we lift up our voices in praise to you. From the ages past, I want to sing to you. That is why your name is is for it. Oh, one more time, say you've been faithful, God. You've been faithful, God. Lord, we acknowledge you, God, from the ages. Oh, that is why, that is why your name, that is why your name. Lord, come, Lord, is forevermore. Eh, oh, Lord, to God, oh, Lord, Baba. If you know God is Lord, 
Oluruto ga come and lift your voice Oluruto Be thou exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Be magnified, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have worshipped. For in Jesus' mighty name we have worshipped. Right now, I want to welcome Brother King Eleshila for the next item. Good afternoon. Praise the Lord Jesus. Um, it's time. For Bible reading and I'll be taking this Bible reading from the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 27 to the end I read all things have been delivered to me by my father and no one knows the son except the father nor does anyone know the father except the son and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God bless the reading of the word. Um, as I close, I will invite our chaplain of Precious Connors University, the Pastor Shola Ajiboli, to come on the podium. Thank you. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everyone. I greet all our staff, all our students, in PCU. Uh, I believe you're all doing fine. The Lord has preserved our lives and we are alive to tell the story. I pray that none of us shall be a victim of COVID-19 in the mighty name of Jesus. We have another opportunity today, May the 10th, to have a brief time together uh, through this medium to reach us to send the word of God. Uh, it's been good since we started and I believe we have been picking one or two things. And this afternoon I want to trust God that the short message I want to pass across we reach us where, wherever we are. All students, all staff, even some of our family members that may be around. Uh, just take your time, sit down, and enjoy this time together. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. I pray that you will put your word in my mouth and let it be a blessing this afternoon to your people. Lord, help us to continue to grow as we seek you, day by day, in the midst of all the challenges of life. Make us to be victorious through your word. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father. I yield my lips of clay to you. Bless your people and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Now, today I just want to share with us what I have called uh, three things God wants us to be. Three things God wants us to be. I want to try as much as possible to always share some short, short messages that can be easily remembered. What's the essence of preaching a long message that you hardly can remember it? So I want the messages to be short, but very profound and strong. Are we speaking about this today? Three things God wants us to be. Things are very active. We want to do things. Okay? We are actively doing things. But by now, every one of us, we should know that God is not what we are doing, who we are, and what we are doing. God wants us to be something before uh, whatever we are doing can be relevant as far as the kingdom is concerned. Now, in these days of challenges, global challenges uh, that we are all aware of, we need to understand these things because uh, they, but is so much impressed about who we are, what we are becoming in him. Uh, in this place, we've been having some time of prayer and fasting, seeking the face of the Lord. And it's been very profound, it's been very, very uh, useful. And it's a time to reflect. Now, what I'm sharing that I call three things God wants us to be, uh, look at it from uh, even the passage that our brother read to us in Matthew chapter 11. Let me look at it from New Living Translation. Verse 27, for instance, says, according to our Lord Jesus, my Father has given me authority over everything. That thing caught my attention. My Father has given me authority over everything. Except the Father. Except the Son. Those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Hmm. That's something. My Father has given me authority over everything. Everything is everything. There is nothing that is not included in everything. If God has given him authority over everything, there is nothing you are looking for that is not found in him. And therefore, you need to be confident that you are in the right hands. When you are with the Lord, you are in the best place you can ever be. Now, the three things I want to share with us. Number one, just like the Holy Spirit has impressed it upon my heart, is that at every period of our life, whether it is for today or for the future, in fact, this message is relevant not just for today, it will be relevant for the rest of your life. To be relevant, there will be no time in your lifetime that this message won't be relevant. And so the number one thing that God wants us to be is for us to be honest. To be honest. Why does God want us to be honest? Huh, because he knows what we don't even know. He knows what people around you cannot know, cannot read out by just merely looking at you. God sees the hearts of men. He knows what we are thinking. He knows what we are going through. He knows everything about us. And the reason why God wants us to be honest is that he wants us to come to him and just open up to him the way we have experience in us or whatever is before him. He will provide solutions to whatever your trouble is, to whatever your problem, to whatever your challenges are. That's why we need to be honest. So there is no wearing of masks. I know those, these are the days of wearing masks to prevent COVID-19. But we are not talking of uh, wearing masks to cover, I mean, things that we need to open up and let God know that we are struggling. God knows it anyway. Whatever it is, that is your situation, is your challenge. So I put it to you again. You must be honest. At every stage of your life, God desires that you be honest with him. It's as simple as that. When you are in a tight corner, please be honest with God. Sometimes people ask you, how are you? You just give them the normal answer in a cliche form. Fine. Good. Whereas we are struggling with stuff on the inside. God wants you to be honest, to be sincere about whatever it is you are going through. Listen, let me give an illustration which our daddy here gave us some time. That when you have a work clock, I'm sure some of us must have experienced it. A work clock, maybe in your sitting room somewhere, and you discover that the battery has gone down and then the clock is running late, so to speak. 
When you look at that, what do you do? You pick it up, you remove the, I mean, alien battery, and then you get a new one and put it there. And then you reset. You reset the time, and then the thing begins to click again, bam, 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 like that. My friend, sometimes you need to sit down and do self-examination and reset your life and trust God to help you reset your life. These are the days where globally people are resetting stuff. Families can't be the same again. Companies can't be the same again. Even churches can't be the same again with this corona pandemic stuff. A lot of resetting is going on. And individually, we need to reset our lives. And we must be honest to do that. Maybe because you have left the campus for some time, and you see nobody is there to watch you again, you have entered into some things, you have put your hands into some things, or even at home, you discover that you are no longer vibrant, I mean, things are not the way they used to be. My friend, take time apart to seek the face of God and let Him reset your life. Reset your life. You have to be downright honest with Him for that to happen. So the number one thing God wants us to be is to be honest. Not just for one day, not just for one month, not just for one year, but all the days of our life. Even when we miss it and we are struggling or we even fall into sin, be honest, come back to Him and let Him reset your life. Number two, God wants us to be holy. That is the hallmark of the Christian faith. He wants us to be holy. Alright? And one thing that becoming holy will deliver to us is like a double barrel blessing. It's a double barrel blessing. Divine presence and divine power. When you walk in holiness, you experience divine presence and the divine power of the Almighty God. God does not want us to be without power. It takes power to rule in life. It takes power to reign in life. It takes power to overcome sin. It takes power to overcome all the challenges of life and be on top. And that's why God said in First Peter chapter uh, uh, 1 verse 16, He said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. When you are walking with God in holiness, you discover that your life is bringing out the fruits that helps you to overcome the challenges of life. Your life is beautiful. You have the strength, the inner strength to, to, to uh, withstand whatever pressures are coming from the outside. God wants us to be holy. Don't forget that. He's not going to change his mind about that. Okay? He's not going to change his mind. Holiness is everything. That is the essential nature of God. And God wants us to partake of that nature so that we can be like him. We can be like his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So because he knows that when we are walking in holiness, it will deliver, I mean, the presence of God. We will enjoy his presence and then his power also will manifest in our lives. The third thing God wants us to be, because you see, after we are walking in holiness and the glory is breaking forth and we are achieving things and we are on top there, sometimes we forget who we are. We forget that we are nothing outside of him. So the third one he wants us to be is to be humble. To be humble. God wants us to be humble. Okay? Because humility will deliver His grace into our lives. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 4 that God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. And as you humble yourself, you move from one level of glory to another. You move from strength to strength because the ability of God, the grace of God is delivered to you and you can accomplish seemingly impossible things because God is working with you. We need to be humble. Now, let me counsel here. Staff and students. The lockdown is still on. We don't know when we are coming back to campus. God knows. But let me counsel here that you take between just one day to 12 days to set yourself apart and call on God. Let him examine you. Just like the psalmist said, search me and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. If you have not been fasting regularly before, maybe one day will be okay for you. Find a quiet place, lock yourself up there. If you know the God of Israel that we serve, call upon him. Expose yourself to the light of his glory. Let him examine you. Let him nail down whatever it is that you need to correct in your life. And so let him reset your life. Let him reset your life. This is the time we need to reset our lives, people of God. The year 2020, I mean, it's not taking it easy with anybody at all. The year came with a bang. And it is the mercy of God that will deliver us to the end of this year. It's a very critical year. I so said, this is not a year to fool around at all. It's not a year to be frivolous. 
is a year to be serious with God. Take one day, take three days, if you can, take seven days or maximum 12 days, like I would recommend to our students. Because most of you are already becoming adults. I mean, you can fast for three days, you can fast for seven days. Go somewhere, retreat camp somewhere, and talk to God. Let Him examine your life. What are the things that are challenging you that you need the word of the Lord to address? So don't forget this. There is nothing that can overpower you, that can overcome you if you pay attention to this thing. They will always be relevant. No matter your experiences in life, if you are honest with God, solution will come. So be honest. That's number one point. Number two is that God wants us to be holy. When you are honest with yourself, of course, and you are honest with God, God will show you the areas that you are missing your steps and He will redirect those areas. So you will embrace His presence, His holiness. You will embrace it. And then, of course, when you are breaking ground, you are achieving things, uh, the glory is upon you, and what have you, you need to be humble. You need to walk in humility to enjoy the grace of our God. So, if you are honest with God, He will reset your life. If you dare to walk in holiness, His presence will be revealed in your life and His power will flow. And if you are humble, grace upon grace, grace upon grace will be your portion. Back to the scripture that we started with in Matthew chapter 11, as I want to close. It's not a long message. That verse 27 again. It said, My Father has given me authority over everything. Everything is everything. There is nothing that you are looking for that is not found in Him. If you dare to be honest before God, and let Him know exactly what your situation is like. So, it's a call for us to be careful the way we live, and then of course, to be confident because we are not without help. We are not without, I mean, the grace of God to sustain us. I want to encourage every one of us, don't lose heart, don't lose faith. Students, staff, don't lose heart, don't lose faith. This is a time to trust God the more. This is a time to encourage one another. This is the time to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His mind. What the devil is after in the life of any one of us as Christians is not your money, it's not your material stuff. What the devil is always after is your faith. <laughs> you can lose your money, but please don't lose your faith. It's not even your health. Sometimes you get sick. You may be sick, but please don't lose your faith. There are people who are sick and they still trust God, they still believe in God. What the devil is always after is the faith that we carry. Not even death. Let's even assume that Satan succeeded in killing people. If they don't lose faith, they will go to heaven. So the most important thing is your faith. So whatever it is that you need to do, you need to guard your faith jealously. On that note, I want to close. I want to commit you to the grace of God, that the Lord will keep you, the Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will see you through these difficult times, and you will overcome surely. The Lord will bless you and bless your parents. Bless everything that belongs to you. All our staff, all our students, the glory of God will continue to be manifested in our lives. And very soon we will be back on campus to celebrate the goodness of our God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for this word. We pray that it will be a blessing to all and it will continue to reverberate in our hearts so that we can walk in the path of your way. Take all the glory, take all the honor. Accept our thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now the Lord bless you. Uh, on Wednesday, We'll be doing the WhatsApp audio message. I want to encourage you to be taking in this word little by little. Go to your main church on Sunday like this, your family church, be part of the service, enjoy what is going on there. And then, of course, in the evening like this. Today is a special day because uh, it's supposed to have been 4 o'clock, but we have to push it to 2 o'clock because of the meeting we are having from 3 o'clock here to the evening. So uh, by next Sunday, it's likely to revert to 4 p.m. Whatever time it is, please make yourself available and enjoy uh, the time together with us. The Lord bless you and keep you. Please stay safe, wash your hands, cover your nose, whatever it is, wherever you are going, and the Lord will continue to preserve us. It is well with you, I pray. Father Lord, as you go, go with us. Let your peace be our portion. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. You are blessed today and you are blessed forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. God bless you. 
See you on Wednesday. Thank you.